Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Better Made Better. I'm Devina Larson. On the episode today, I'll meet with acclaimed actor and director Rajat Kapoor. Let's hit the road and go meet him now. Rajat, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you, Devina. So Raja, let's talk about your journey as a director and as an actor. Let's look first into the past and talk a little bit about the experiences that helped build who you are today as a person and as a professional. What was it really that intrigued you, that got you into this industry in the first place? Uh, well, I must say that I had no interest in theatre oh. uh, when I was growing up. I didn't even know something like theatre existed, you know. Cinema, yes. Cinema, I was very passionate about and... Uh, I don't know how or why, but by the age of 15 or something, I knew I'm going to make films. And by the age of 16, I joined the film society in, in the University of Delhi. And then suddenly I saw Godard and uh, Herzog and you know, all the yeah. films you don't watch otherwise, Bergman. And I was certain, I'm going to make films. And theatre, nothing. I didn't even watch a play. I think I must have watched two plays by the age of 20. So what happened with theatre, I had gone to join uh, Alliance Francaise to okay. learn French. Yeah at the age of 19 uh, and they had a small theatre troupe there mm. so I just walked in and I saw these people doing some stupid things and uh, I said okay why not I just joined it for the heck yeah. of it and boom you know it was like a it like a high you know yeah. and next three years were just a huge theatre high uh, putting up stuff rehearsing getting money for the play yeah. uh, putting up posters the works you know of uh, amateur theatre. Most of these people in the group uh, had a job. So they would work till 6, come to rehearsal at 7.30, wow. rehearse till 12.30, 1.30, go home, office next day. And then, But what a high. Amateur theatre, I think, is still yeah. the biggest high. So Rajat, it all began with your participation in the theatre groups in Delhi. And then you moved on to study at FTII in Pune. So how did this, your education and your experience with the theatre groups, how did that help shape your career making decisions? You know, this is a, a funny thing because I knew that there is a place like FTII. I knew that if I want to make films, I should probably go there. But I just couldn't do it. I didn't have enough courage to leave my uh, folks in Delhi. I didn't have enough courage to tell them, you know, this is uh, what I want to do. And then my first play as a director is a play called uh, Firebugs, a Swiss playwright, Max Frisch. And this play is about a man, Bidaman, who is a normal bourgeois gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are lots of fires in this city and everybody is uh, scared. Some arsonists are, are putting buildings on fire. And then these two people come into the house, Bidaman's house. And he says, who are you? They say, we are the Firebergs. We are the arsonists. Yeah. He says, ha, 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 ha. They have lunch with him. They manage to stay there. Uh, they rape his wife. They bring oil tankers in the house. And he doesn't do anything. And the whole play was making fun of the fact that this guy won't do anything. Right. Uh, in spite of uh, knowing all the dangers. And I directed that play. And I said, we are making fun of Bidaman. And uh, what are you doing? You are not doing anything either. So I think that play kind of pushed me into making a decision and I went to FTI. Thank God I went to FTI. Yeah. So this Firebugs example is a big one, but I'm sure everything in its own way was leading uh, me to do what I, what I do, yeah. you know. But speaking of life experiences, can you tell us about some of the challenges and obstacles that you may have faced during your career and how did you overcome these obstacles? Did they kind of help build even more who you are today and help build your career? Uh, you know, when uh, I, I came out of FTI, I worked with Kumar Shani and Manikal for three years as an assistant and uh, after that there was no work, there was no money, there was no income, yeah. uh, there was nothing. Uh, except the belief that I'm going to make films. I could still do theatre because that doesn't cost money. Uh, so I would 
I was living in Bombay at that time, but I kept going back to Delhi to do a play with Chingari and come back to Bombay and kept writing scripts. But there was no hope uh, of making these films. And the, the times, 90s, were not suited to uh, so-called independent cinema at all. In the 70s and 80s, NFDC used to fund these films. They had stopped uh, by mid-80s. So NFDC is not funding your films, uh, there are no multiplexes, there was no audience. Uh, so it was an impossible dream. And I thought at that time, maybe by the time I'm 70, maybe I would have made two or three films. And that was okay with me. You yeah. know? One, that was the best that could have happened, yes. actually. Uh, and I was okay with that. Okay, so this is what life has in store? Fine. Let's work towards that. Uh, and all this time, theatre, luckily, kept one's uh, sanity going. Yeah. So at least you had something that you felt you were doing, you know, and some people came and watched it, most of them didn't like what we were doing, but you kept doing it anyway. So Radha, shifting focus to your acting career, you got a big break in 2001 with Dil Chata, I believe, and then you got recognized internationally through films like Bheja Pride and Monsoon Wedding, Corporate, a lot more. So how were these sort of pivotal points in your career and were there other pivotal points through films and acting that influenced your uh, future? Acting was again an accident. I had uh, no desire to be an actor. I was not pursuing that. Really? Uh, actually, Monsoon Wedding was the first film. Before that, I had done a couple of ads. So what happened with Monsoon Wedding is uh, that Nasir had seen me on stage. So he recommended uh, my name to Meera. Right. I met Meera, she auditioned and blah, blah. And I got that role. And uh, Farhan and his team had seen my ads. Uh, so they called me for an audition. Wow. So. Really, for the first time in my life, I, I made some money with the Dil Chata. And then people just kept calling me, uh, which is good uh, because also what happened with this uh, little money that I was getting, I said, okay, if nobody wants to produce my film, I will save this money and I will produce my film. Uh, and in three years, I had saved uh, about 13, 14 lakhs. And uh, I went online uh, to crowdfund my film. And NFDC gave some money and we made Raghu Romeo in 2003 because of uh, crowdfunding yeah. and uh, so really my acting career helped me uh, make Raghu Romeo, you know. Yeah. So to summarize, what would you say are some of the key takeaways in your life, both as a director and an actor in theatre and cinema that happened in your past that really shaped who you are today? Chingari, the first uh, theatre experience in Delhi. Uh, and. Madhavan, who used to direct plays for Chingari. Then uh, Kumar and Mani, definitely huge influences on me. Acting has just really been good luck. It's, it's just uh, come to me without me looking out for it. And uh, I'm still very choosy about uh, right. what I do yeah. on screen. And uh, I do one film a year as an actor. That's all right. Okay, great. Well, Raja, thank you so much. We'll continue this conversation after a very short break. It's time for a very short break, but don't go anywhere because the conversation continues on Skoda Presents Better Made Better after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Skoda Presents Better Made Better. Today, I'm in conversation with Rajat Kapoor and we're taking a spin around Mumbai City. So Rajat, you mentioned previously that you're very picky about the films that you choose to work on and you've both acted and directed in a lot of alternative Indian films and alternative theatre. Where would you say this space is at today in India? It's never been very good, you know. That's why it's alternative. Otherwise, uh, you know, Bollywood is so big uh, and by Bollywood I mean uh, the mainstream cinema. Yeah. It's so big uh, that it doesn't really let anything else grow, you know. Uh, and our need for the mainstream kind of cinema as an audience, uh, it's just like an addiction. All of us are addicted to the mainstream cinema, yeah. whether we admit it or not. So week after week after week, these people go and watch the same kind of films. When they come out and they say, what a stupid film. Yeah. And next week they'll go and watch something else, yeah. you know, which is similar to what they saw last week. Uh, and when it comes to our kind of cinema, they say, well, I'll watch it on a DVD or on Netflix or Torrent or, you know. They don't want to pay money and uh, go to a cinema hall to watch our films. So that 
it's a bit of a struggle and i've been hearing for last 15 years that uh, the digital medium will change it all people will uh, have more access to our films to an extent it's happened uh, so if you could not watch let's say aankhon dekhi in a in a cinema hall yeah. now you can watch yeah. it on netflix uh, but i don't know if that has uh, still translated as a revenue model mm. so we are still struggling uh, within the alternative space right well can you tell us about some of your recent films both films that you've acted and directed you know just a little bit about these films why you picked them what was your inspiration she as an actor i am looking for a film that is coherent to start with uh the director i can work with i can believe in and the script is not bad uh but eventually somebody else has vision so it does not reflect so much on me yeah. you know i still want to be a part of better films within that space but it's still like i said somebody else's vision and as an actor you're becoming part of that overall vision uh and i if i feel i can do something within that uh, scheme of things i accept that role but as a director i'm very very certain of the kind of films that i want to make they must reflect my sensibility sure. my belief system my aesthetics uh to the last t you know that's also been uh, the reason why it's so much of a struggle for me because i insist on creative control uh, with the work i do yeah. uh it has to be completely mine uh aankhon dekhi was the last film i directed Uh, which uh, not many people have seen but i must say people who have seen it uh, i have really loved it and the kind of uh, love i've got out of aankhon dekhi is uh, exceptional you know has your style and your sensibilities as an actor and a director evolved over the years i hope so otherwise uh, otherwise you're dead if you're not evolving uh, but i can't uh, uh it's not tangible what the devolution is you don't know you just work uh and you give it your whole uh it's for somebody else to tell you you know whether there is an evolution or or you're doing the same shit that you were doing 20 years back okay and finally what is your view on indian cinema as a whole today where do you think it really stands what do you appreciate about it and what do you think is vital for its growth in terms of the way it changes over the next few years I am uh, optimistic but I'm not very enthusiastic because I think we uh, we are pleased too easily we uh, a little step we take and we, we think we've done uh, something incredible and we've not done incredible cinema uh, over the last 30 years sure. we made a few good films 3 4 5 passionate people are doing something which is not bad uh sometimes even good but definitely it's not great what we are doing so what would you say is really vital for the industry to grow as a whole industry is growing industry doesn't have a problem and then i'm not, i'm not talking about the industry uh industry is growing in terms of revenues in terms of footfalls in terms of uh, number of films uh i'm only talking about the quality of films industry is growing but uh, we are not sure Well okay can you give us a little sneak peek into what your followers can expect to see from you in the near future what are you working on currently uh well i have uh, since i have been thinking i have been writing and meeting producers to find money for my next film and you know devina has not never been easy you would think after making six films it would become easier right. yeah but uh, unfortunately not so I keep meeting people I keep uh, proposing scripts to them and uh, somehow they are not enthused. So Rajat we can't wait to hear what you have in stock for the future but on the other side of this break. Okay. Don't go anywhere the conversation continues when we return on Skoda presents Better Made Better. Welcome back. You're watching Skoda presents Better Made Better. Today I'm in conversation with the multi-talented Rajat Kapoor and now we're here at the gorgeous Renaissance Hotel in Pawai Mumbai. So Rajat we've spoken all about your past about your present what you're working on can you tell us what's in the pipeline what can your followers expect to see from you in the future? Uh a lot I hope. 
Uh, well, we've just done two new plays this year. The one is uh, an adaptation of Macbeth. It's called What's Done is Done. The other one is an adaptation of As You Like It. It's called uh, I Don't Like It As You Like It. Okay. So these two and Hamlet and Lear are already running. So we have now four Shakespeare plays, all done by clowns, uh, running together. And there's a lot of travel with that. So we'll be traveling all over the country, all over the world, hopefully. That's one part of it. Uh, as an actor, I have a very interesting film called Mantra. Okay. First time director, Nicholas Karkunga. Uh, there's me, Kalki, Lucian Dubey, Adil Hussain. A very nice film, I think. As a director for films, uh, I'm still looking for money. I have now four scripts ready with me. So, you know, all the time that I spend looking for money and meeting producers who are not really interested, but they are interested, yeah. uh, but not interested enough. Uh, so, while I wait, I'll write. And I write another script, and I write another script. So, soon I'll have many scripts. And uh, if no producer is willing to come, I think next year I'll produce it myself, go crowdfunding, yeah. beg people for money, and uh, make a film somehow. Because I think that's the only way to be. You have to keep working, you have to keep putting yourself out there, you know. Yeah. Uh, Innovating, evolving. Evolving, hopefully evolving. Uh, take a risk, take a chance. And you have to make things happen, I believe, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you, one can't be too passive. Sure, one can't absolutely. Just wait. But speaking of evolution, where do you see the Indian cinema space, theatre, art? Where do you see it going in, in the coming future? What do you hope to see from it as well? What do I hope to see? I hope to see a lot more innovation. But even more than innovation, I think uh, a kind of a rigour which is missing, you know. Right. We have that rigour in arts. A lot of... You can... There are at least 20, 30 wonderful artists who, who, who come onto the scene every year. But in cinema and theatre, we don't, unfortunately. Even in writing, we've not had uh, exceptional writing in the last 20 years. Uh, so I hope there's a lot more rigour. We, uh, we are able to push the envelope a little more. Uh, and it'll happen eventually, I think, when uh, we are a little more educated as a country. You know? I think that's where we lag because... We are still struggling to find the basic uh, subsistence, you know. Yeah. Uh, and we are, when you're worried about jobs and, and uh, shelter and to buy a small house or no, education is very uh, far in our priorities. So I think with education, there will be an appreciation of art. And when there is an audience who seeks this new art, there will be people making it also. Do you think we'll be on an international level anytime soon when it comes to the arts, when it comes to alternative films and theatre? Uh, not for the next 30 years. But who knows, I'm very interested in the future because uh, at one level it's almost science fiction. I'll tell you something, when I was uh, 15, 16, I read a comic book, a Russian uh, comic book which had a picture of people uh, in a video conference. Okay. So for me it was like... Wow, they're talking on the phone, but they can see the other person. Wow, for me that was science fiction, and it's so uh, common now. Uh, so who knows what will happen after 30 years? Even after five years, who knows what will happen next year? But where do you see yourself fitting into this scenario? What do you hope to contribute to theatre and to film and to art? What do you hope will be your contribution in the coming years? My contribution will be that I'll continue to work. Uh, my Don't hope, my hope from the future is that I want to live uh, till I'm 100, and I want to be working till I'm 95. Sure. So that gives me 40 more years to work. 40 years is a long time. A long time. I hope I'll be able to make uh, 10, 15 films in the next 40 years. That's not asking for much. Yep. Uh, but you know, the idea is to keep working because uh, if you're working, you're living. Otherwise, absolutely. And if you're working. Uh, there is no uh, guarantee that it will be good work. But I think it's important. You know, like Woody Allen, he turns out a film every year. Yeah. Some of them are great, some of them are okay, not so bad. But he, you have to make four films to make one great film, you know. So just in summary, are there any specific milestones that you hope to achieve in the coming years, in your future, professionally and profes uh, personally? Personally, I told you I want to be 100 years old. Yeah. And then do another interview with you. I hope you'll be alive. Hopefully. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, professionally, 15 years in the next 40 years is good. Yeah. I don't want to 
make a great film or a big film. That's not my ambition, you know. Uh, great film, yes, maybe if it happens. The other thing is you can't plan a great film. You can't plan a great yeah. work, you know. Sort of just happens. It'll happen. If you're in the right space, if you're in the right space to receive and to give, it'll happen. Well, so, inshallah. Inshallah. Raja, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to have you here on the show. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all we have for you on this episode, but stay tuned to the channel as we bring you a lot more exciting stories on Shkoda Presents Better Made Better. Until then, from the entire team, many thanks for watching. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.